How would you like to be loved? What's your most toxic trait? <laughs> I objectively wasn't okay. Recently I had like a coaching call, it's like kind of like therapy. You inspired me to go on this year of celibacy. She kind of catches me and then stops the spiral like from continuing. He like, when are you guys gonna like have children? <laughs> <laughs> Going to my friends for sleepover. <gasps> oh my god! I can't believe your mom's letting you have a sleepover. Oh my god, this never happens. I'm this so actually excited. never happened when I was young. Oh, your mom never let you have no. sleepover? No. <gasps> I brought some ingredients to make some matcha cookies. You're like such an adult. You got engaged this year. <laughs> you might move out of New York <laughs> back to West Coast to be <laughs> with <laughs> your beloved. How many years of long distance has this been? Two and a half. How long have you been dating for? Two and a half. Did you ever have like in your head like, I want to date someone for this long before I get married? I think when I was in my early 20s, there wasn't like a specific timeline, but I just thought, you know, I meet my person by 28. Oh, okay. We date for two years, get engaged like 28 and get married shortly after. Uh huh. And then you get to your mid to late 20s and you're like, yeah, it's okay. It's all out the window. <laughs> Now, with this relationship, like it's weird, but like I knew at the moment I met him, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, man. I went home, I told my mom, like I oh met my him first And you met at a wedding, right? Yeah, we met at a wedding. I think within six months, I was like, I'm ready. Look, <gasps> to get married. Oh my God. Like I was ready. Wow. I was like, let's do it. And he was also like, yeah, I'm down too. Oh, but then there's just like, I don't know, it was like during the pandemic oh, and then true. parents and then it just took longer. Wait, six months is fast. That's yeah. wild. But when also, you know, you know. Yeah, you were like single for five years, right? Five years. And then I think like while I was single, I also dwindled down my ideal list of mm -hmm. what I'd like in a partner. When I was younger, it was definitely like, oh, he needs to be like this tall and like right. this job, look like this and blah, blah, blah. And then I think at that time it was like mid to late twenties. I was like, oh, you know, It'll be great if he's spiritual. Doesn't matter like which god or gods or whatever. Just like as long as he has some basic level of faith. Ideally, he can speak the language that I speak, Chinese, so he can communicate with my parents and like have the relationship that I have with them. And then the last thing is just like humor. So when I met him, I was like, oh my god, he looks kind of Korean, kind of like mixed. Like, what are you? He's like, oh, I'm Chinese. I'm like, do you speak Chinese? He's like, yeah. Do you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Do you believe in God? He's like, yeah, like great. <laughs> I don't care what God. One cup of brown sugar. So while we do some baking, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, BetterHelp. We do talk about a lot of things that we're trying to work on within ourselves. And personally for me, it was the most accessible way to even try out therapy because you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed therapists. So it makes the process of finding your perfect match that much easier. All you have to do is answer a few questions about your needs, your preferences, your quiz, so they can try to match you with the most suitable therapist from their network. And then the thing I really like about it is that you can communicate with them over a phone call. Personally, just find it easier to talk when I don't have to like look at a person, but you can also do a video call or text and you can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If you click the link below, betterhelp.com slash leah's field notes you can get 10 percent off your first month thanks again betterhelp for supporting this channel and making therapy accessible worldwide look how piao liang fry 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 <gasps> you have ketchup i love ketchup i love ketchup too brand new ketchup it's my lucky day these taste so much better when you when you cook it properly can't believe you've been microwaving you like ketchup right i want to put a lot Ketchup is my mm. friend. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Wait, why is it so good? <laughs> Bake your nuggets. Oh my god, yeah. Don't microwave them like. Try the ASMR. I think my brain's broken. Why is it so it dry? dry? It's so dry. I was literally hating on these. I was like, these taste so bad. How could anyone sell this? But I'm the problem. What's your most toxic trait? I don't know, I don't show my true self to friends as much I as I would I to. I want to see your true self. Yell at me. I don't really know. 
She's I'm low-key very needy, mm, like true Sagittarius fashion. And I think that's why it's like in a relationship it comes out the most. Because mm. I'm like, you are my person forever. Oh, yeah. So like, give me attention. Oh, same. So just now we're cleaning my clothes in my bedroom. That's mm -hmm. still not clean. <laughs> He was outside watching something on his phone. Mm. I was like, can you just come in and watch next to me while I fold my clothes? And he was like, yeah, of course. He gets on the bed, he's like watching. And I was like, can you like look at the screen for a little and then look at me first? <laughs> look at me. <laughs> and then look at me. <laughs> and then, like, but like the thing is like, I'm like half joking. But you're serious. All jokes <laughs> stem like, I'm from serious. truth. <laughs> That's so But funny. like he does it, which I think is like, That's he, just, he just plays along. And what he, is James's sign? A Leo, so it's perfect. <gasps> oh my god, that makes sense. I love Leos. I feel like Leos, I just see them and I'm like, I like you. Taurus Moon. Oh, mm -hmm. very That's grounded. why he's so like, so he's not like a, like in your face Leo. Are you a Taurus? What are you for Moon? Aries. Oh, I'm you're intense. Fire. Oh, wow. I'm crazy. Cool. And then my rising's Capricorn. Mmm. So you seem grounded. Do I? Yeah, your YouTube videos, you're like giving advice, you're like calming. How to get your life together, how to like build a routine. I think that's one side of me. I feel like that's like aligns with the Capricorn rising. Mm -hmm. I actually feel like my channel is very curated. So this is very freeing, thank you. You're welcome. What is your most toxic trait? Have you talked about it on your channel? No. Uh, I feel like I'm probably needy. Mm -hmm. I can relate to you wanting someone to like be in the same room as you, living with a partner. Mm -hmm. I'll wake up instead of doing my own thing, I'll be like, wake up, hi, mm -hmm. hi, hi. Good, good morning, together. good morning, let's go brush your teeth. But like with a friend, I would never do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe when we're like super, super close. Yeah. But I would like just like get up and like let them do keep thing. sleeping. Yeah. So I feel like neediness, I can definitely relate to. Oh, I think expectations. Like I feel like Hi. judgmental. Mm. I feel like I'm very judgmental towards this is myself. Why we're sister signs. Oh. I feel like I'm very judgmental towards myself, and I think it makes sense because definitely my love language like words of affirmation. But growing up, I asked my mom, I was like, "Why didn't you ever like compliment me?" And she was like, "Oh, I didn't want it to get to your head." So my mom would only give me like critique mm -hmm. and never any compliments. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of framed the way of how I look at the world. And then going to design school, which mm -hmm. is literally about Even like more. finding pain points in like product design or whatever. I become like systematic and professional in the way I find problems. <laughs> so it's really just a double whammy. I can be very hard to myself and that reflects in my expectations towards a partner as well. Mm -hmm. Wanting them to be better and change and grow, but wanting it to be fast. And it's not nice. Like, I don't want to be like that. I I'm smiling because I'm the same way. Oh. I just, just all I see are flaws. <laughs> all I see are ways people can improve, yeah. including myself. Mm -hmm. But it's like, instead of fixing yourself, a lot of times I'm like trying to fix other people. When I was younger, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a noble thing. You're helping other people. Yeah. But then now that I'm older, I'm like, that energy, you're literally like bulldozing your fiance now, fiance with, just like. Direct it back. Yeah. And, the, and like, I think we talk about this all the time. It's like a lot of times what we see in them that we don't like, it's things we don't like about ourselves. Oh, it's a straight top mirror. I know you're gonna oh, no. <laughs> Anytime anyone annoys you, it's a mirror. Even yeah. if you think the thing that they do is like subjectively bad, if you like look at the root of that behavior and then you're like, oh shit, maybe I do that sometimes and that's why it bothers me that this yeah. person's doing it. When you point one finger, three fingers point back. Whoa. Uh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just gonna exit. <laughs> Nugget drop. Hmm. You're actually my other half. Always watch my food rise. My roommates will come and they'll just like see me standing mm -hmm. in front of my pizza like this. <laughs> but like, it's With so like your fun. fork and you're just like. Oh, are we helicopter parents? Like, are we overbearing to our partners when they like don't need our advice? Mm, like, my goal is like pull back with the partner in the future and then push more with friendships. Mm. And I think like you inspired me to go on this year of celibacy, mm. literally last year in this apartment. 
I discovered you decided to be like re-celibate and that like blew my mind I think one thing I realized after my second serious relationship was I felt like my person had to be my partner mm. but your person can be literally anyone like your mom, your dad, your siblings, your friends, yourself I think I just went through like a breakthrough of I've been very closed off for a very long time. Mm. I think because I experienced loss when I was 17, I didn't know how to process it. So instead of processing it, I just kind of like shut down my heart. That was just kind of how I lived for the longest time. And I think I knew this maybe like five years ago. I was like, okay, maybe I should do something about it. I can't live like this forever in fear of like being heard of someone leaving you. Or, you know, I just remember thinking like, I never want someone else to feel the way I felt when I lost someone I loved. To prevent that from happening, I just don't get close to anyone. Oh. And vice versa, right? Like, I don't want to lean on people and I don't want them to lean on me either. Yeah. And it's gotten me this far. It has made me really strong. But at the same time, there's like, I don't know if you can tell, there's like walls. There's like mm. pretty high walls around me mm. that I've like been slowly starting to take down. But there's just this like this remaining bit that recently I had like a coaching call. It's like kind of like therapy. Mm -hmm where this got brought up and he's like, why don't you think this part of you that tried so hard to protect you when you're young? And I like started thinking it and like, I just started bawling. Cause I thought of my younger self. And then I was like, you know, like, thank you. You did well. You don't need to be afraid anymore. Like you can rest now. Like you did a great job. And I think it's like through these realizations, I think like I've always wanted to be a better friend ever since like years ago, right? So I just think I'm capable of more, mm -hmm. but I think that part always held me back from like really reaching out. Not wanting to lose someone. Yeah, exactly what you're saying of, I wanna be more present and to be able to love my friends in the ways that they want to be loved and also like be there for them, even like when they can't ask Right, you know? that's true. Checking in on yeah. people, calling. Being proactive. And yeah. Another tangent realization is also like before I love friends the way that I wanted to be loved. Oh. Not knowing that like, because I, I, I thought I was a great friend <laughs> and I thought my friends sucked. When oh, I no. told them in high school, in college. How are you loving them? I think I'm very acts of service and quality time. Okay. Like quality conversations. Mm -hmm. And like, if you need me, I will be there. Mm. And even if you don't verbally say you need me, I'll still be there for you and like go out of my way to do a bunch of things for you, mm. whether you realize it or not. I was seeking some sort of acknowledgement from my friends. That was like the downfall. Right, you there's wanted, expectations. You wanted them yeah. to be like, oh my God, yeah. we need the best. Yeah, or, like, and I wanted something. them to need me. Mm -hmm. But even like a simple thank you is still like expectations. Yeah, true, yeah. true. That's a tricky one. Oh yeah, it's tricky. How would you like to be loved? How can I love you better? Oh. Rowena, tell me. Oh. Tell me about what I can <laughs> well, do for no. you. I think like just good vibes. Honestly, I think you're already a great friend. <gasps> yeah. Oh, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, like you're, you're so good with authentically egging people on. Oh. Whenever I tell you something, yeah. you genuinely, from like the depths of your core, you're like, oh my God, yes! <laughs> yes! Like you're so <laughs> excited that it makes me excited. Oh. Yeah, so I think like you just being you. Oh my God. Is already amazing. Thank you. Wow, thank you. And I also want to say I really appreciate your friendship too. Thank you. Like I feel like you're like my big sister that I never had and always wanted. Even the way that like you and James were like so willing to help me read through like a contract. I felt so yeah. loved. Aww. I can really feel like the acts of service. The acts of, of service. <laughs> 大姐姐 <laughs> You keep me young It's like a grounded young Cause there's oh, okay. like chaotic Gen Z energy that's just chaotic mm. Period mm. But I feel like chaotic and like a Like a classy <gasps> I'm chaotic in a zen way. Yes. No, but actually. Okay, love yeah, that. Yeah, because I actually, you're like, you are very wise beyond your years too. Oh my gosh. Which is I think why we get along. Okay. At the same time, your Gemini is like young and also old. We just... We're just, we vibe we're just together. together. I want to open our cookies. Oh yeah, I think this is, this has been baking The moment of truth. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, yes. 
It looks brown on camera. In real life, it's greenish brown. Poo poo color. Okay. Shrek poo poo color. More crunchy than I imagined. Yum yum. With a little milk. Oh, it's gonna stop. Oh no. More. Okay, yeah. Keep farting, keep farting. No more. If I squeeze harder, something else will come out. Okay, you were saying that you feel like your presence on your channel is like curated. I've grown comfortable in opening up in one way about, you know, my mental health and like the journey that I've been on. Mm. It's a lot of like reflecting and sharing reflections. More serious. Yeah, it's a bit more okay. serious. Like trying to talk about serious things in like a more lighthearted, easier to digest way. Mm -hmm. Like every time I was like going through a hard time during the pandemic, your channel first to go to. Eek. But you also have this very crazy side of you. But it's like with specific people. I think it's like when people don't take themselves seriously, it gives me permission to just like mm. be wild and chaotic and crazy. Mm. But it's like, I'm not gonna just like, nah, like at home by myself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Honestly, ever since the day we met, it was so comfortable. There was like no awkwardness and like I have <laughs> sometimes I still have social anxiety. I was really surprised. You were so confident in your videos yeah. that when you're like shy, I'm like confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm shy a lot of times. I was like, times. what? <laughs> She's well, not I'm shy. shy. <laughs> <laughs> I watched your videos. <laughs> With my previous relationships, I felt like I had to be the perfect girlfriend, mm -hmm. whatever that meant. When I was single for five years, I also realized the way that I was with my guy friends was very playful and mm -hmm. very not demanding. When I took time to think about like what kind of relationship I want to be in moving forward, I was like, okay, I want to treat my significant other as I would treat my best guy friends. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah, I'm so much more chill to my guy friends. Right? Like, you literally don't care. I don't have high They're expectations. They're so gross. In, like, lo the most loving way possible, like, guys can be pretty gross. Yeah. Throughout, like, across the whole spectrum. But, like, you still love them. Mm hmm Right? And you're just like, ah, oh, whatever, like, it's okay. Mm hmm Because, like, you're not dating them. Mm -hmm. Right? But, like, when you're dating them, it's like, expectation, expectation, you should know better. Wait, then maybe one of my pet peeves is, like, when people say they're gonna do something and they mm. don't do it. I think that's something I've been hard with like partners and even with myself. We can't expect ourselves to be like this much greater and this yeah. amount of time or this much more patient or less anxious. Like it is so like baby baby incrementals that get us there. Guys, I mean you have to remind ourselves. It takes time and it's okay. If I wanna do something, I don't need to like be that right away. It's like slow change. It's just setting the intention. Sometimes almost subconsciously moving towards it. How do you feel about getting married? I'm very excited. I think it's like growing up watching movies, you have all these expectations. I think like the older I've gotten in general, just realizing more and more that like you are a script writer of your own play mm. and you can make your own rules. You don't need to always ask for permission. Like if you don't like what's being written and like what society expects of you, then write your own version. So I think just like being able to lean into that more and be like, okay, what do I want out of a partner and why is this important? I think it's like the honestly time spent alone was really helpful because it really helped me get super clear on the person I want to be with. Getting clear on that helped me realize pretty early on that my current Guy is the guy. James is the guy. James as the guy. Oh my god, seeing you with James makes me so happy. Like, I mean, I just met him for the first time today. Seeing you two walk down the street together, Aww. your energy and just the way, like you guys aesthetically look cute, but like your energies like are just so beautiful together. Aww. And that's why I had your engagement photo as my screensaver Aww. for like two weeks. You screenshot to me, I was like, girl. <laughs> I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> oh, can't wait for this one. What are your thoughts on marriage? At this point, I'm like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I think when I was younger, definitely really wanted to be married. Mm -hmm. My first like best friend type of boyfriend, his parents were not married. Mm -hmm. So he was like, when I asked him, I was like, oh, would you ever want to get married? He's like, nope. And that shocked me so much. I was like, what? But yeah, no, his parents have like such a beautiful relationship. And then I went through a phase of being like, no, I don't want to get married at all. Marriage is just like fake. It's for a piece of paper. Like, <sighs> And then now I feel like I'm very detached from both those very polar yeah. opposite narratives and it's like, 
I feel very neutral. Yeah. But I do think a wedding would be really fun. Like having an excuse to throw a party where I combine like all my friends yeah. from all different parts yeah. of the world. I think all my friends would vibe with each other. Yeah. So I want a camping wedding. <gasps> Like a camping somewhere over the week slash weekend and yeah, then like, it's like a part of the ceremony. Yeah. That I, is fun. I think I want to have it like on my farm. I'm going to make people bring tents and it's going to be like a weekend or week of camping. Yeah. And then I want to have like performances, like my mm -hmm. friends that do music to like sing. I want it to be basically a music festival slash vegan food festival. Yeah. Food from the farm. Wow. So maybe it'd be like a September vibe, like a harvest. Yeah. Okay, so the plan is like, I want to find land somewhere that I love in the next like few years. And I don't need to build on it immediately. Maybe like start making all changes or maybe there's a cabin or something small on it. Mm -hmm. But I really like, one of my dreams is to like design my own home or like build my own home. Like, you know, I'm not a very materialistic yeah. person. Yeah. I just want a house, which is kind of a bigger ass than anything. <laughs> but, but it's very practical. Yes, I'm yeah. a very practical person yeah. and I want like a house with like eight bedrooms. <gasps> house all your friends. Yes. It's not for you. Yeah, like I, See? I want everyone to be together. Like if someone didn't have a place to stay or they like weren't feeling their work or had like a bad family situation, like I want to be able to be like, hey, come stay with yeah. me. Come to your bedroom. Yeah, like literally yeah. give them a bedroom. Yeah. You can Good teach idea. all of us how to farm and then we'll all be converted and just live with you forever. <laughs> that is actually my dream. <laughs> yeah, I think like when it comes to marriage and relationships and everything, I really believe in life when you let go of something, it'll come back to you mm. or just anything. Like mm -hmm. to be attached to either extremes or to be attached to anything of how something should or shouldn't turn out It's the moment where you let go, it'll just play out the way it's supposed to I think like making plans for me or even over planning has been a source of security But at the same time, I think when I make plans like for travels next year or something I'm also okay with like none of it happening Except learning to sail, I really want to learn to sail Oh yeah, a lot of people talk about wanting to do a lot of things um, Like oh I want to learn this, I want to go here, I want to do mm -hmm. blah 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 but not many people actually go out and live the slow life on a farm mm. and wake up at the buck crack of dawn to tend to the gardens <laughs> and to see the farm animals. <laughs> yeah. It's very refreshing. Aww. Yeah. Thanks. Did something inspire that or what led you to that realization? Because I think for a lot of people, they're just like, your life is different than mine or like your circumstances are different. That's why you're able to live that life. No, I think there's definitely like privilege that make things easier or less scary. And I don't know what it's like to be another person. And I think everyone's path that they go through, the challenges, this, the hurdles that they have to leap over are going to serve them and make them stronger. But at the same time, I think we do have a lot of autonomy over how we can react to things. I don't know, graduating university feeling really lost in the beginning of the pandemic. And like, yes, I should get a nine to five and just have like a salary. But then I was like, I don't think I'd be happy doing that. I could also just work a minimum wage job. Like as long as I can like buy food or even if I had to live with my parents for the rest of my life and just make a lot less money than working like a really nice product design job that would drain me because I don't want to do it. I don't like mm -hmm. a nine to five environment. I don't like offices. I could do that and have a lot of money, but then also not be happy with my day to day. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a balancing game. Yeah. And I think at that time too, my mom really wanted me to get a job. So every time we'd go home, like we'd end up like, I would be in tears, like fighting with her. Either do what your parents say, you don't fight, but then you have to have the burden of that. Yeah. Or you just fucking fight. <laughs> you just, you fight, yeah. you cry, or you feel whatever pent up frustration, yeah. anger. And I think knowing that it's temporary, and I think one of the reasons I moved to Montreal was also to have distance. And I swear it, I to New York. Oh, really? Low key. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> Don't tell your parents. No, my mom knows. After graduating, I took six months off to figure out what I wanted to do. Because I studied start? business. Oh, okay. So everyone did like the traditional, you know, management consulting, banking, finance. 
accounting. <laughs> and even though I didn't know what I want to do, I would see how they're living their lives and how how happy and thrilled they were to be crunching numbers all day. That I was like, yeah, I have no idea what I want, but like, I don't want that. I think especially because I went through loss and then it was already making me question life and our existence. And the question I wanted to answer was like, why do we exist? You know, if we're here on this earth, at this specific given time it's already like one in a billionth chance of like a probability for us to actually like be born mm -hmm. so like if that is so precious i don't believe we're here to do the things that we've been sold since we're young you know to like get good grades go to good school get a good job buy a nice house have kids settle down and like one day you die and that's it and so i think that was kind of like what threw me into this quest of like trying to figure out who I was and my place in this world and I guess also my purpose. And then graduated, was living at home for six months and then just like clashed so much with my mom. It's just a thing where like, you know, you move home after graduating from college and they still think you're a high school student. So she's like, what are you doing? Help me. I'm like, no, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to figure out my life. Mom, like I can't. When you're young, you're already in a questionable state, mm -hmm. right? And then especially you add on the layer of like existential questions that I had. Mm -hmm. I think that adds on like another layer to it. So it like completely pressed me down to a place where like I just, I objectively wasn't okay. It okay. was like a really low place. For the longest time, like I just try to be strong. Like the, that part I was talking about, like I was trying to be strong and just like do everything on my own by myself. And like it worked for like a while, but then like I didn't feel better, I didn't get better. I was like probably, probably depressed, had like anxiety and all that. So there came a point in time where like I also had an eating disorder where like I was doing the thing and I would like look at myself in the mirror and just be like, what are you doing? Like you need some sort of divine intervention, something that you alone can overcome. One thing led to another, I read like the power of now and I was like, Whoa, like presence. No wonder I was so unhappy at like such beautiful places because I just wasn't present. You know, my mom being a very spiritual person, growing up with Falun Dafa, have you heard of mm -hmm. the spiritual practice Falun Dafa? She was like, Rowena, I know what you're looking for. It's this thing, it's like spirituality. It's in this book, you should just read it. But I was like, no, it can't be that easy. Mm -hmm. I read the, like I read the book, like this spiritual textbook ever since I was young. Hi James. Hello. Make yourself comfy. Okay. Don't be, don't be nervous or... Come join the sleepover. Yeah. He's like, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> How do I say no nicely? Blocks. <laughs> yeah, long story short, I like sat down and like read the book of the spiritual practice and I was like, yeah, I think... What's the Falun Dafa uh, book? It's called Zhuan Falun, spinning the law wheel. Basically like treating every opportunity in life as a way to work on yourself. It's like it's Buddhism. Like nothing in life happens by chance. Mm. So whatever you come across, the good, the bad, it's all there for you to improve and to grow as an individual. I think my favorite part about Buddhism, like I don't know what happens after death and I won't <laughs> know until I die. Yeah. But I out of all like the afterlife things, I like reincarnation concept mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. because I feel like it makes us all very connected and makes life feel very cyclical and it makes you have a lot of compassion for like the people, the nature, the animals around you because it's like we're all just like going through these experiences of life and maybe yeah. in another life I could be a rock. So if I could vote for my afterlife <laughs> or what afterlife is, I would yeah. vote for reincarnation. <laughs> Wait, can I ask? Oh, okay. Dance? Yeah. Um, it can just be your voice. Can you come a little closer? Okay, so earlier I asked Rowena where her most toxic trait is. <laughs> and she said I should ask you. So, mm. what do you think Rowena's most toxic Do you have an answer or no? I did. I said I would. Don't, don't tell okay. him. Okay. You don't need to hold back. This is your time <laughs> to shine. Mm. But, like, make it cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's my toxic trait. <laughs> Rip me apart, but like make it, yeah, quiet. <laughs> With most traits, there's both a good side that helps you get to where you are today. And then obviously like a quote unquote bad or like shadow side that mm -hmm. is maybe not as helpful. So I think the her all or nothing attitude is 
where why she is where she is today mm. but it also means that sometimes she's like a little bit too ambitious um, and what happens she like underestimates how much time it takes to do things schedules may change <laughs> oh yeah we um, talk about this a lot yes for example like if he's here and then i'm like oh i'm gonna be at the office so i'm gonna be out of the place all day you can take your calls here and yeah. then all of a sudden i'll be like oh, i need to film and he'll be like okay okay but he's like he's really he's a trooper about it but it's still like things that we try to talk through yeah so yeah what okay. about like a relationship toxic trait because only only you see that and mm -hmm. it's like i gave the example of earlier i was like okay can you like watch next to me while i fold my laundry and like look at the thing but like maybe. look at me too yeah yeah, I maybe think that's you like, don't. Maybe he doesn't find toxic. Yeah. Yeah, I think with that, like you're probably a little needier than you originally thought you were when you first joined. Before you first joined. <laughs> when I first joined our union. <laughs> this, co this corporation. <laughs> probably had a really strong identity of yourself as like very independent. So, I think probably when we first started dating, you wouldn't have described yourself as quote yeah. unquote needy. Not that you. I don't think you were like are super needy. Yeah. But you probably are more and than you thought you would be. Yeah. What do you, you think your most toxic trait is? Ooh. Juicy. Juicy. <laughs> Starts crying. <laughs> I think my most toxic trait as like a Enneagram 2 is mm. that no, I... Which is 2? Two, two is, uh, uh, is the helper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Leo helper. As in Leo also is very like, I want to love you. Oh, okay. I want to do everything mm. for you. Okay. Yeah. I think sometimes uh, it's my default is to kind of pour myself out to help people. Mm. But I think when I myself am not at my healthiest emotionally, sometimes I can overpour, and then as a result, I can actually end up feeling resentful. Okay. But then at your healthiest, for example, it's a core part of my leadership style. So for example, how I serve my team. Uh -huh. How I recruit them, how I run my team, how I run my company is very driven by acts of service. Very and, compassionate, yeah. thoughtful leader. Yeah, but then on the other side of that same exact coin, maybe I'm super tired, it's just been like a really long week and I feel like I've given a lot and I haven't quote unquote gotten anything in return and I feel pretty resentful and low energy mm. and sad and mm. things like that. Yeah. So how do you remedy that when you notice yourself getting into that state of mind. I'm more of an external processor, so I work with a coach on a lot of things, and so catching myself in the act mm. and trying to catch myself before I spiral too much. Right. And I think Ro knows me well enough as well at this point to also be like an external processor for me, mm. and then be able to call that out and say, hey, like, you know, I noticed that you're not feeling as high energy as you, use, as you usually are, mm -hmm. or hey, is something going on? So then she kind of catches me and then stops the spiraling from continuing to happen. Oh. Yeah. Do you ever feel that with each other? Do you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's very natural. It's never going to be perfect, but I think we're doing a pretty good job of communicating about it instead of one person continuing to spiral and then passive aggressively just going quiet and then the other person being like, whoa, whoa, like what happened, you know? And then it just dragging on for days or weeks. It ends up being an issue for like a couple hours, maybe. Right, instead of like a couple of days yeah. or yeah. a couple of weeks. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Like I do get upset, but I don't think I've ever felt resentful towards you. Cause I feel like you're so loving and giving mm. that it's not, it's never because of like what you are doing, mm. you know? Like I feel like you're already doing so much. It's just like, I don't, I, because I've been loving you so much, I can't think of like, why? <sighs> oh my god. You're just like so perfect, James. Oh like, wow. And to be fair, we have our arguments, but like it's been, yeah, like it's, I don't remember the last time I was mad mad at you. Hee <laughs> Jim Bop. Okay, like when are you guys gonna like have children? <laughs> <laughs> 73 questions with Woke. Hey, uh, what's all that stuff on the floor? <laughs> just don't look at it. It's totally staged and this is totally scripted. Oh. I'm just trying to be relatable. <laughs> um, but like this is actually pretty messy, but So okay. like, yeah, tell me about your bathroom. Like what's in here? We have a sink. Wow. This is like me versus the girl he says don't not to worry about. I have a hypothesis. 
Guys are so much better at taking care of themselves than girls are. They don't overthink. They're like, I want to wash my butt hole and have a clean butt hole. Like, I'll just get a bidet. Girls are like, oh, but like, like, what is it going to feel like? And then do I really need it? Like, do I, it's like, it's kind of expensive. And like, how do I install it? What do I do with my existing toilet seat? And then like, by the time they're already thinking through all of this, the guys already got it. Because the moment you stop, start to like, so close. analyze and like, overthink oh things, you're going to not want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are my skincare products. I've stopped using a toiletry bag because you have to just <laughs> use Ziploc bags to cross oh, the border. Where's your moisturizer? This is my moisturizer. Oh. Menjula face oil. Yeah. It's actually um, a friend of mine made this. It's Ayurvedic yeah. using Whoa. like a combination of blended. Yeah. Um, organic oils using mm -hmm. like their Indian tradition. Mm -hmm. It's named after the grandma and Aww. I asked her if I want to give it to you. Thank you. Here you go. Oh, thank you so much. This texture is very beautiful. <laughs> Nailed it. I feel like I'm in a rose garden. Thank you. You're welcome. So also, um, she said one of her friends makes it with her foundation and <gasps> really liked it. What's on the menu? I just, I, cl I clean my face with the oil cleanser but i usually like using oil cleanser even after like if i wear sunscreen oh. i think this does a good job of like really taking it off okay you're warming it between your palms and then you just work it into your skin and it smells beautiful mm. it's like um... oh yeah it feels very soft subtle wow mm. what's this do like pressing it into your skin, but do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friends who floss together stay, stay together. together. I kind of like seeing how other people do mundane things uh -huh. to be like, am I doing it right? <laughs> so you do a few teeth and then uh -huh. turn it? Okay. Wow, thank you. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Good burrito. Night. Night.